Hello, this is Kyla Jeter, and I am the Elementary Teaching and Learning Technology Specialist for Spartanburg School District 3. Today, I will be giving you a brief introduction to Chromebooks. First off, we have a short YouTube video introducing you to Chromebooks and how they work. I will post this video to our Edmodo group with the presentation, and you can go back and watch this video at your convenience. There is also a brief video discussing how Chromebooks are used in education and the benefits of using Chromebooks in education. First off, we will be using a numbering system with the Chromebooks. And this is so that students will be able to use the same device every day and it will help you keep track of who is using a certain device and not taking care of it or who is responsible for damages if any occur to the device. Having students use the same device every day will also save time when the students are logging in. So the Chromebooks have already been numbered and what teachers need to do is decide which students from each class will be loaded on the same Chromebook. So we will have one student from teacher one class loaded on the Chromebook and then another student from teacher two's class loaded on the Chromebook. So they'll partner. Next, we will address logging in. When you or the students go to log into a device, you will use your username and the at spartanburg3.org handle, which already should be loaded into the device, and your password will be the same district password you use to log into the district computer daily. If it's your first time logging into a Chromebook device, you may be asked to choose an avatar. Now on to touchpad settings. Touchpad is just another word for the mouse pad that appears below your keyboard on your Chromebook. Clicking, scrolling, and dragging and dropping all work basically the same as a regular laptop device. What's different about a Chromebook is how you right click. To right click on a Chromebook, you have to touch the mouse pad or touchpad with two fingers and click. Once your students are logged into the device, this is what the Chromebook homepage looks like. Um, this white box here doesn't come up until you press the app launching button down here or on the keyboard. But this is the desktop, um, this background area. And then here you have the app shelf where you can pin any important apps that you need to get to on a regular basis. And then you also have your systems tray where you can check settings and then you have the message center. And once you do click your app launcher, if you click the show all apps option, it'll show you all the apps you have installed. Up here is just a list of handy shortcuts that you can use to get to the app launcher or the file manager or to take a screenshot or to open an item that you have on your app shelf. Next up, when dealing with Google, you'll hear the term waffle and hot dog used a lot. Waffle refers to the apps launcher and it's these nine dots here. And um, you can access that in the lower left corner of a Chromebook. And it's also um, in the Chrome browser when you're logged into Chrome on any device in the upper right of a new tab. Hot dog refers to the Chrome menu. And with the recent update of Chrome, it's actually changed from three lines to three dots. So sometimes it's referred to as hot dog ends. But this will let you access the Chrome menu that takes you to your settings and also to your downloads. Once you click the hot dogs or hot dog ends um, to access the Chrome menu, you can... Um, show your bookmarks bar. You can also see all the bookmark websites you have. You can find and locate a word on the web page you're on or you can clear your browsing history. When working um, with the Google search box or address bar, there are some things you might need to know, some vocabulary that you might need to be familiar with. So the address bar right here in red, which is also a close up here in red. This is your search box or your omni box and it allows you to do a Google search directly from this box 
or it also serves as the URL address bar. Then across the top here, you have your tabs, and that hasn't changed. That's just the separate browser tabs, just like in a reg on a regular laptop. And then over here to the side of the address bar in blue, and you can see a close-up of it right here, you have your extensions, and extensions are just small programs that you can add to your browser to add functionality. So it just gives it a little extra. Also, located on the Chromebook keyboard, there is a button that has a magnifying glass on that. And it, if you click that, it will launch um, a search box or your app's launcher. Something that you may have already noticed is that um, on a Chromebook, you don't have function keys across the top row of the keyboard. Instead, you have keyboard navigation buttons. And they do things such as allow you to go to the previous page in your browser or to the next page. But the magic button is the refresh button or the reload the current page button. And this is Google's magic button that you should use anytime you encounter a frozen page or program that is not doing what it should or what you need it to do. Um, Google says that this button solves 90% of problems that occur with Chromebooks. But there are also a few other buttons that allow you to increase and decrease the brightness of the screen and to mute and increase and decrease the volume. You may have already noticed that the Chromebook keyboard doesn't have all the keys that a regular laptop keyboard has. For example, it didn't have a delete key. But this is a list of keyboarding shortcuts for different functions that you might need to perform on the Chromebook. Next up is bookmarking, and it works very similar to the way you bookmark websites in the Chrome browser. You just go to Settings, Bookmarks, and Show Bookmarks Bar to show your bar across the top. And then you bubble in the star um, that is on the address bar of a website to make it your favorite. And you can add it to the bookmark bar or to a list of bookmarks. And you can click the Home button, which is located beside the search box, to return to your home page at any time. You can use the screenshot key at the top of the keyboard to take screenshots of the entire screen or a certain area of the screen if need be. Now the best thing about a Chromebook, in my opinion, is that your settings travel with you. It doesn't matter which Chromebook you're on or which one you log into because your settings, your bookmarks, your apps, your extensions, they all go with your account because everything is stored in the cloud. The Chrome Web Store is where you go to access apps and extensions and add-ons, anything that you might not have in your apps launcher that you would like to have. You just go to the Chrome Web Store and you can get there just by Googling it and you type what you're looking for in the search box and it'll bring up a list of items over here and you can choose to install. So what are apps? Basically, on a Chromebook, apps are shortcuts to web applications that allow you to do things on the Chromebook, such as create documents or flashcards or read books or practice certain skills. What I love about web applications is that they install in seconds and they're always up to date. They update themselves automatically. In addition to apps, in the Google world, we also have programs that are called extensions. And extensions are little programs that add useful functionality to the browser and to the websites you visit. Some examples are QR code reader or the Google Classroom extension. Let me minimize my screen and I will show you. Here, these are my extensions up here and they always appear to the right of your address bar. So this is my QR code reader, this is my Google Classroom extension, um, this is my Google Dictionary, I have one for Symbaloo and Pinterest and Padlet. The list just goes on and on and on. Okay, let's go back into present mode. And once you have explored the extensions and applications and all that on the Chromebook and you're ready to sign out, you click on your icon picture down here in the bottom right corner and that will pull up this small menu and you can click sign out beside your name 
Um, you can also sign out by powering the whole computer down, but closing the computer does not log you out. But you need to make sure that you do log out and you have your students log out when you're done using a device because if another student comes in to use that device, you want to make sure they're logged in as themselves. Also, you want to make sure that students log out and shut down when they're done using a device because devices that are shut down charge quicker. On to charging. This is what the device charging cart looks like and the tablets just slide right up in there. When you get the light on the outside, you know that that tablet is charging. If you don't get the light, then it is not charging. This is a list of some basic Chromebook care tips. Chromebooks are usually pretty durable as long as you take a reasonably good amount of care of them. You want to make sure you unplug them gently. You carry the Chromebooks with closed and with two hands and you encourage your students to do the same. Keep food and water away from them. Close the Chromebooks when you're not using them to save the battery. And at the end of the day, you sign out and shut down. And like I said, slide, when you slide the Chromebook into the charger, you need to look for the light to make sure it's charging. In addition to that list of Chromebook care tips, I've also included two short videos um, about Chromebook care that you may want to watch. And these videos are also good to show your students. This one shows students the correct way to carry their Chromebooks. And this one gives some extra um, Chromebook care tips. And so you can go back to the presentation and watch these videos at your convenience. And to wrap things up, I thought this was a good graphic to share with students so that you can discuss the difference between using the Chromebook as a tool and using it as a toy. And you can discuss with them that using a Chromebook is a privilege. And if they don't follow good digital citizenship rules and the acceptable use policy for the district, how that privilege can be taken away. And here is a list of some additional resources. I've included a link to a Chromebook Boot Camp Interactive Guide. And basically, this is an interactive infographic that will help you get started with Chromebooks in the classroom. It has links to videos, resources, and tools that will help you learn all the basics of using Chromebooks. And it can serve as a quick reference guide if you forget how to do something such as add or remove a user from a device. It covers a variety of Chromebook topics. And I also have included a link to the G Suite for Education blend space that we created for the induction class of teachers. Um, Google Apps for Education um, was recently renamed, and the new name for it is G Suite for Education, but it's all the same tools. You may not need all of the links and resources included in this blend space, but it is a good resource to refer back to. Well, I think that just about covers all the important points of getting started with Chromebooks in the classroom. Again, this is Kyla Jeter from Spartanburg School District 3. If you have any additional questions, feel free to email me and I will address those as needed. Uh, again, thanks for watching and I hope that you tune into my YouTube channel for more helpful ed tech tips.